Hey everyone, Randy here from ESG. Today we're going to be talking about how to pass data between different levels. So we're going to go over first how this actually works uh, and talk about the engine a little bit, but then I'll show you how. So feel free to skip ahead if you just want to see how. So first we have the game engine starts. You open up Unreal Engine, uh, but then it starts initializing different objects and different classes and different functions. And eventually it gets to initializing something called UGame Instance. Uh, and it also initializes things like the local player class and other things. Uh, but the thing that's special about these is that they start after initialization and they don't go away until the Unreal Engine actually shuts down. Now, everything above the line stays alive for the entire tidy while the engine is alive, like as I said, but everything below it only stays alive during when a level or a map is loaded. So you have objects like the U world object, U level object, U actors, actor components, uh, game mode bases, and player controllers, and so much more. So when you open up a map, the map, the level gets loaded, it creates all these objects for all the things within the level, uh, but then when you switch to a different map, all those objects get destroyed. So let's say for instance we have two maps all right we have map one and map two and they both have a bunch of actors a game mode actor components a player controller but you want to pass data between the two maps so there's two ways of doing this one of those ways is by passing it into an object that stays alive during the entirety of the engine or you serialize the data we're going to be going over an object that stays alive that being the U game instance class uh, if you're curious what serializing data means, that basically is taking data, saving it to like a text file, and then opening that text file in another map and getting and reading in that data from that file. It's a little bit more complicated, very doable, but it is more complicated than this. Uh, but the good thing about serialization of data is when the game engine shuts down, the data stays in the file alive. Um, but in new game instance, once the engine shuts down, it goes away. So you pass that data into the UGame instance class that you create. It stays alive forever. That map can go away. And then you can grab that data from the game instance class. So now let's go over it in a level. So we have a base level. And what I've done here is I have two levels, first person map and next map. And when my player character dies, it's just going to open up next map. So I'll just show that. So just walk off. I will die and spawn back, and I'm in a new map. Perfect. Exactly what I want. So, uh, now I want to create a new... I want to create a new game instance. You want to create a special one. So just look up game instance in your class. I forgot to spell it correctly. There it is. Game instance select. Uh, just name it whatever you want. My game instance... Uh, you can go ahead and open it up. Here it is. And it looks like almost every other blueprint. Great, normal. Now, the key to remember here is that if you want something to be saved within the game instance class, you have to create a variable for it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, just a Boolean variable. That's fine. We're just going to call this uh, test bool. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a second one. Um, and we're just going to get test name. We're just going to make it a name object. All right. So when I tell it to save to these objects, it'll save. And when I close down the level and I go into the next level, I can call these objects from the game instance. So let's go into event tick. And we're going to go ahead. You could just call. All right. Put an event tick there. But what you can do is call uh, get game instance now here it is now trick that people forget is yes this gets the game instance but it doesn't get the one that you're associated with so you need to cast it so you need to cast it to yours to my game instance there we go so i can go ahead and cast that here now you can see um well i'm not i won't show you but i'll just explain it to you this didn't actually set anything we created this class but it's not actually set yet so what you have to do is you need to go into your project settings so 
So we go to project settings here. You need to go to maps and modes and go to the bottom here, a game instance class, and this is the default one. And you need to select yours. Once you've selected that, it is now the game instance class for the project. Key, another key to remember here is it will not change. You cannot change it during runtime. Once it's created, it stays this way. But you could do all kinds of data. You could do controller data, stats data, anything you want to be passed between levels. So we've cast it. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the tick for this, the tick rate. I'm going to turn it to two seconds. There we go. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get, I'm going to get the data. What did I name them? Test name, test pool. Okay, we're going to get test name, get it. Um, and we'll just, we'll just go ahead and print it. go so uh, what we could do is when we die we can set this we can hold we can tell this to say hello all right so I went ahead and set up just a little demo to show this so I'll just go ahead and explain this demo so when the player begins, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab whatever is in the game instance class and set it to the variable that's within the character class. And right now, at the beginning, the game instance class has nothing in it. It is set to nothing. All right. Uh, and at the end play, when the player dies, we're going to go ahead and grab our game instance. And we're going to grab the test name variable and just set it to hello. And then we're going to completely destroy this level and open up the next level, the next map. Uh, and then this is just a ticker that just prints out uh, the the test name in the game instance class and the test variable one within the character class. So what should happen is that in the first level, they're both set to none because this is none and it's set in character. But when the character dies, we set it to hello. So this will change to hello. And then when the character spawns back in, it will also be set to hello, so they'll both be printing hello. So let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to spawn in. All right, you can see they're both printing none. Game instance and character are both printing none. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and just jump off. And then we spawn in, and they're both printing hello. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. Okay, so I want to go ahead and show it as well within a debugger window. So we've got a debugger window right here. We're gonna go ahead and play, go into the debugger window. We're gonna see it's set to none just to prove it to you. Uh, and then we're gonna walk off and we die. We come back to the debugger window. All right, so we can see here that it's, it goes back to hello and that's exactly what we want. And this data will stay here just like this until the engine is shut down, which is exactly what we want. However, again, remember, go into your project settings and you have to set this specialized class. Now, the great thing about this is you can store pretty much any type of data variable you want. I mean, you can store any type of array sets, maps, any custom variables. It doesn't matter. It's like a normal blueprint. Uh, that just is really just a, a holder for any type of data you want. And it's super, super useful. But ladies and gents, I hope that helped. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or what you guys would like to see next time for a tutorial. But uh, we'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, like, tell me what you think. And take care.